Hello, I'm Dean Martin with Transmission Digest. Welcome to the Transstar Industry Studios here at Babcock's Media. Welcome to part two of the DCT presentation. Uh, in part one, I kind of basically discussed how uh, uh, DCT will differ from other transmission types. Uh, I have some components here uh, to give you a better sense of what, uh, what the differences are. Uh, on this side, I somewhat have the wet DCT apply components. On this side, the dry uh, in the middle is fairly common between the two. Uh, to start with, what makes this a unique uh, design, you don't have just one input shaft like any transmission does. You basically have two input shafts, and the two input shafts are driven by the dual clutch assembly, whether it's wet or dry. So if you can imagine, you have one apply element that's turning one input shaft for, let's say, odd gears, first, third, and fifth, or the other, which turns uh, other components for fourth, uh, for second, fourth, and sixth. So you have two input shafts, and you have different gears mounted on it, and you also have, in effect, two output shafts. These are pinion shafts, because of course these are front wheel drives, but you have gears loaded on the shafts just like you would any other manual transmission, but you have two of them, and these pinion gears both drive the differential carrier, like any front wheel drive would be. So you can see, as far as the basic operation, you have two inputs, two outputs, your different gears on each shaft and are driven uh, when they're called upon. Uh, this happens to be a Volkswagen O2E, and on the uh, front, side of this uh, transmission, the only thing you're going to see is this big cover. And this is almost like a big uh, metal clad seal. It's bonded on the outside and on the inside. And the only thing that sticks through that is this little stub shaft, which goes into a damper plate. There's no torque converter. There's no standard transmission clutch. This merely goes into a dampener, which bolts to the uh, uh, engine. And what you have inside, in effect, are two different clutch hubs. We call this K1 and K2. And these clutch hubs are driven by two different clutch packs. You basically have a small clutch pack, which is your K2, and a large clutch pack, uh, which is K1, and you have uh, two different pistons. This dual clutch assembly uh, is somewhat rebuildable. You can replace the frictions and steels. However, when it comes to the bonded pistons, you can only get out the K2 bonded piston because the large K1 is kind of captured into the drum because that's how it was designed. So you can't replace that. If that one happens to be bad, you're gonna have to uh, buy the entire assembly, uh, which is now available separately. For a while, it wasn't available separately. So as these two clutch packs toggle between each other, it will shift first, second, third, fourth, and so on. Uh, it has another advantage. The shift can be pre-staged so that as you're driving down a road, the actual synchronizer can shift. The driver doesn't know it because the clutch has not applied yet. So when it flips over, the synchronizer was already engaged and uh, it's, it makes for a, a, a better shift. What, what uh, 
makes this thing shift. You have shift forks on a wet DCT. However, there's no rod that goes to it. You have these small pistons that are on either side of the fork. Hydraulic pressure is what moves them back and forth to move your synchronizers. Again, it's much different than a standard transmission. Um, you have a normal pump on a wet DCT to provide pressure. And of course, like any other automatic, a big monster valve body with a lot of solenoids, uh, input sensors, and you gotta watch, this one tends to break if you're not careful. That's a wet DCT. A dry DCT, uh, the application component's a little bit more like a manual transmission. And what you have is a clutch module. And unlike uh, a normal manual shift or standard clutch, which has one disc, this module has two uh, clutch plates incorporated into it. It has two throwout bearings. There's a big and small throwout bearing that sets on top. You actually have two forks that engage both the large and small uh, throwout bearing. And you have two stepper motors. And these stepper motors engage into the forks and a computer will actually cycle them back and forth to make this clutch release. It's a real sensitive uh, setting. It has to be right. Uh, Ford has certainly had some issues uh, with some of their vehicles with this particular dry uh, DCT. But that's how the clutch works on a dry DCT, basically, uh, to engage and disengage like a manual transmission. What the shifting part entails, this is actually a shift motor. You have two individual drives. Again, this is all com computer control. You have two little gears. This is an, like an idler gear, which is engaged with the, uh, the stepper motors. It also engages with another uh, drive, with another uh, shift uh, gear. And this is made more like a swash plate. And you can see that there is a groove that is kind of staggered. Your shift fork actually goes into this groove and as this motor uh, turns and it turns this gear, when it hits the offset, it causes this fork to shift back and forth to move your synchronizers. Again, it's all done automatically, uh, electronically, and that's what makes it different from a normal manual shift transmission. So again, uh, when you're rebuilding this, you can have the automatic side that you can maybe replace some clutches or work on the valve body or the standard side, which you're replacing synchronizers, bearings, and so on. Uh, but beyond that, these are certainly rebuildable. Uh, there's gonna be more and more on the road. And so you, uh, have to be uh, become familiar with them, what design you have, and what product is available. Again, uh, check with Transtar for product availability and part numbers. I'm Mike Riley. Thanks for watching. See you next time.